Welcome back to GB Guns. As you may have noticed, we're not at home. Although, if our living room was like this, it'd be kind of cool. Yes, it's um, very comfortable. We're still in Vegas. We just finished the four-day defensive handgun course at Front Sight. Uh, it was Tia's first time, and she was rocking... The Walther P99AS. A double-action, single-action, decockable striker-fired gun. With a paddle mag release. And I ran my carry gun, the Grand Power K100D. We already gave you one video talking about our thoughts after day two. This is after day four, including the test, a shoot house, and some slightly more advanced things than the first half of the course. That's what's coming up next on GB Guns. So, Hands, at least my hands, are a little tender and sore. I'm dehydrated. Uh, every time I come to the Nevada desert from Oregon, I turn into a raisin. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what do we do on day three? Yes, we shot a lot. <laughs> it's been a long four days, um, and I, I don't remember the specifics. I know that we honed in skills that we had learned in day two, or days one and day two. Um, a lot more shooting on day three and day three is the day that we went through the shoot house yeah and the shoot house or they call them simulator bay um, they've got them set it up now now nicely right next to the range where you're training um, previously you had to get on a trailer and ride around front set's got 550 acres or so so it's a big facility um, now it's right next door and it's essentially a 360 degree safe spot to shoot and it's constructed using plywood and they have corners and things and doors uh, like you would in a house and what was the scenario they gave us the scenario is you come home and you see bad guys in your garage or you know lights moving around in in the house and you realize that you've got to clear your own home and so it, it starts off with how to properly open a door and slice the pie dealing with coming around corners and things like that and as you navigate through the house um, there are shoots and no shoots and you've got to deal with them as you'd like. Um, T, what was the experience like for you? It was eye-opening. <laughs> it was probably my sixth or maybe seventh time doing it here at Front Sight, it was my first time in that bay, which was nice because I didn't have corners memorized and things like that, um, which is kind of an extra challenge because you think about, like, if, if you're clearing your own home, you know where everything is and how big stuff is, if there's a hallway, if there's a room, if there's a window, things like that. You don't in this one. So in that sense, um, it brought back a lot of military memories for me. Um, and as much as you guys see on YouTube all the operators trying to be tactical and wearing chest rigs and doing all this stuff that they've probably had no training in, um, doing that stuff for real is an emotional roller coaster and very tough and quite frightening. And outside of Front Sight, all of the other training I've had for it, including ITTS and Army, for me, had been with the team. How about for you? Yeah, exactly. It had always been with the team, and it's always an enemy um, that is integrated into those scenarios, as it was here, but there's a lot more talk of family. Yeah, and no shoots and things like that, and so it it, um, it triggers stuff. I, I know for Tia, it, it got a bit emotional for me as well, and even though I'd done that scenario a lot in the Army, um, and other places, that training was actually a detraction. In fact, the first time I did this here at Front Sight, uh, afterwards the instructor, they put a, a, a D-ring clip on your belt to stand behind you so they stay safe and a hand on the shoulder to be able to steer you. That's I, the only reassurance you have going through there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I dragged my instructor through the, through the simulator the first time, and afterwards he stopped me and said, whoa, 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 are you, are you ex-military? Truth be told, I was still in the Army at the time. I'd just come back from my second deployment, and it switched on, and I ripped through that house. Everybody got three rounds. 
Um, I didn't shoot the no-shoots, um, but uh, I did it with such aggression that he said, you know, if, if this were to be a reality, you might have some challenges in the court. And that was your first time? That was the first time. Okay. Um, ever since, and that was nine years ago, um, ever since then I've been working on trying to do it a little more slowly and more cautiously, and still to this day, or till yesterday, um, I still went through it too quick. I was in assault mode, and although my shots were good, I didn't hit the no-shoot, um, all threats neutralized, I did it with a speed that is more appropriate when you've got a team. And that meant that I left myself exposed a few times because I was rushing things. I did remarkably well, actually. I, I didn't have any casualties. Nobody that shouldn't be shot wasn't shot. Um, my the only negative critique that I had coming out of out of that situation was I missed the three by four box um, in in making some of my shots, um, and I'm okay with that. And that box is the cranial ocular cavity which um, is one of the targets used here at Front Sight, and we will explain that and show that uh, while talking a little bit about day four, uh, which was our skills test and then some more fun stuff. All right, so day four was skills test and some other fun drills. That cranial ocular cavity that Tia referred to is this head box. Uh, this target is unique to Front Sight and they set it up based on x-rays of 3,000 or so people and determined which area in the head was that soft spot that allowed a direct path to the brain for a failure to stop drill. They don't train headshots for the sake of taking headshots, they train them as a failure to stop because it's usually two and a half to three rounds to end a gunfight regardless of caliber, that's an FBI backed fact. Um, and the other reason when you take a headshot would be, of course, if someone's armored or you've had a failure to stop. You've put two shots into their torso, they're not stopping, you need them to stop now. Um, and then the thoracic cavity, sorry I don't film a lot of backward stuff normally, <laughs> <laughs> this, this dome shaped thing is where all the vitals are and once again the size of this is based on averages from x-rays of real humans. So pretty effective. The skills test um, is what day three we spent a lot of time practicing. It involves um, shooting from the holster, shooting from the ready uh, at three, five, seven, ten, and fifteen yards and then malfunctions drills. Yes. And it's it's not just your accuracy, you're also scored on time. Each of these exercises has a, a time limit uh, that you're supposed to knock things out within. The scoring setup I think is very fair in that accuracy is weighted a little more than time. Uh, so It's much more critical to make an accurate shot than it is to shoot your gun. Which I really value because in defensive shooting you're criminally and civilly liable for every round fired. So if you're going to fire that round, you got to make sure it lands. Um, Which is another reason um, that I, I'm going to a different type of firearm for my defensive carry. So that I have time to negotiate if I want to put that round, let it go out of my gun. Um, my current EDC, I don't have as much control over my trigger as I think is necessary in that situation. So, And that's that conclusion that Tia's come to is the same that I have after attending this. I've, I've done this, heck, I did it with a Trick Dog Glock 34 once. You know, I, I've done it with a, a competition-oriented gun just so I could be faster. Um, and I had come to that conclusion prior to coming here, which is why I, I, I chose the P99. Um, but this just really, really solidified that, yes, that is that is the correct carry system or operating system for me to be carrying with. And it's true, um, quite often we were not the first shot fired on the line with the double action, 
but uh, double action first shot on both the P99 and the K100D. Uh, but uh, you learn to manage and govern the speed of that double action. And I found the transition from double action to single action to be not quite so shocking. Um, mostly because you're, you're putting so much concentration on that first shot and the double action shot that as long as you've got good form, the follow-up shot, your gun's already there. So having a quick light single action follow-up shot was easy, at least for me. It was, oh, absolutely. It was, and it allowed me time, especially on those headshots, you know, when, when I'm pointed in, if, if I'm not there, I can let back a little bit, whereas if I was running you know a single action trigger i i probably would have missed that shot and either critically wounded somebody or scored negatively <laughs> and we saw a lot of that most of the class were new shooters uh, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of folks that <coughs> pardon the dehydration <laughs> uh, a lot of folks who bought a gun within the last year um, because of the Rona, the police departments not responding to calls, the you know the state they live in. Yeah, all of the chaos that has made twenty twenty what it is for America. Um, that's what had the people there, and uh, unfortunately for most of them, they had to run just the gun that was available, um, the one that was at the shop, and as of course, I mean, what we do gives us the privilege of trying out lots of stuff, but. Um, they, like most people, and like my first few gun purchases, um, couldn't try the gun or even know what to look for. You just throw down $600 and hope for the best, and then try to uh, either learn that gun or move on. Um, there was one gal in our class that Tia spent a lot of time with um, out of California, and she had an older SIG, I think it was a 229, I'm not totally up on my SIGs, but very slide heavy, um, double action, single action, and it gave her a tough time, but it's the only gun she had. And she, But she stuck through it, and the, I would stand next to her in a gunfight. Like, her skills are amazing. Yeah, it was, it was pretty spectacular, and one of the things that um, I kind of miss about teaching and love about witnessing that transformation is she had shot a couple rounds with that gun before coming here and by the end I'm willing to bet she could outshoot most of society. Um, Once her hands are not as tender as they were when we when we left the course she would probably give me a run for my money. Yeah, she's, she, she became a pretty good shot and there was a, <laughs> uh, an older lady in the class as well that um, sweet old <laughs> sweet, sweet old grandma type uh, full of character, um, completely new to firearms, and um, another event on day four is you do a man-on-man -man shootout. They put everyone's names on cards, I was shuffle hoping it. Hoping you'd mention this. <laughs> shuffle it, and um, then pull two at a time, and you got to shoot three different steel targets. And how many people were in our class? Thirty-one, thirty-two. And and where did I rank in that little competition? Second. Yes. <laughs> With a double action first shot, running a 20 plus year old <laughs> yeah. Walter P99, it was it was pretty awesome. Um, but this 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 woman did spectacular with it because she took her time on her shots. Because there were more ways to knock yourself out of this competition than there were to stay in it, uh, including a hostage target, um, which is what got me. Um, I nicked the hostage right above the shoulder. Hostage probably would have thanked him later. Yeah, and I have insurance for things like that. Um, unfortunately, having insurance um, was not part of the rules of no. the test. <laughs> so. What I thought was interesting about that test, too, is they had us shooting something that nobody had shot before, or many shooters had not had the opportunity to experience. And watching their reaction when those rounds hit that steel for the first time, the first few iterations of people going up there and hearing that steel, it was it was fun to see. Yeah, those of you who have shot steel know it, um, the, the joy of the audible feedback. So rewarding. <laughs> and that, that big fat splat. I mean, we don't use steel much on our in our tests and our videos because we want to test the gun and we want real accuracy. Um, shooting a group on steel 
I'm sorry, that's not the same, not nearly the measurement as little holes in paper are. Um, so that's why we don't do it too much at home. Mm. But but we do sometimes, and it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not fun. for accuracy, but we do it. You know, when we're <clears throat> shooting faster, um, because when you shoot faster, you do lose some of that precision uh, that you should have when you're firing defensive rounds. Um, but the steel, when we're trying to shoot fast and stuff, is more appropriate. And the fact that we can hit most of our shots on that steel is also commendable because we're shooting the same size target that is um, the thoracic cavity yeah. on, on a human target at the said distance that would be appropriate in, in that kind of a situ in defensive situation. So what, um, T, what would you say is your biggest takeaway from this course? My, uh, do it. Like, I spent two years being begged to come to front sight, and I didn't <laughs> want to, because, you know, training, 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 it's all somebody else's rules and stuff like that, but it is so valuable. Um, I, I feel almost guilty having carried before. Yeah, and that, um, we were talking about this last night, we're filming this the next morning because we were just beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I went through the same carry ex kind of evolution, if you will, that, that Tia has gone through now, and that is that there were times when I didn't feel confident carrying, or I was carrying and, and questioned my own ability, questioned if I really knew what would be appropriate or not, and it was attending this course that gave me, I don't want to say, confidence is, is too much of a blanketing word, but it told me where I was. It told me what my skills actually were, what's a capability, um, what's a limitation, when when to know if, if it's even appropriate. Um, there's a lot of classroom stuff as well that helps you think about when you'd actually draw a gun. Um, what the ramifications for for doing that would be um they they do go into you know so you've been in your gunfight now what um and they they break that down very specifically and and it's it's very eye opening even simple things like um some thugs approaching you you draw your gun it ends there what's the first thing you should do the guy runs off not a lot of people think about this. First thing you should do is call the police. You just drew a gun in public. Well, and what I appreciated too, in, in after calling the police, is is what you say. Um, just if you have, it, you should make the time to come and take this course. It's it's an excellent excellent course. I've learned something every time. My hands get raw every time. <laughs> I try to bring a, a, a different gun each time, and it's. You can't, if you do something like this, um, you may find things you hate about your gun, uh, but keep in mind that outside of a four-day course in the Nevada desert, firing hundreds and hundreds of rounds and drawing hundreds and hundreds of times, um, you're likely not going to put that level of intensity into your gun use. Nor are you going to do it in as safe a fashion with the support, the constant, the constant positive support that you get from the staff. Um, and they have guns that you can rent here. If you're uncomfortable with the one that you have, want to try something else, they have all of, they have everything you need here. If you don't have a gun yet, you're trying to decide on what you want, come here, try it out. Um, but the, having the knowledge to carry a gun, I'm, I'm breaking up here. It it really puts a lot of things in, in a perspective, and I think, um, like I said, what it did for me was it, it let me know what I was truly capable of or not. And you could say, yeah, it's in a school environment, that's ideal, blah, blah, blah. Sure it is, but there still are stresses. Like, for me, I hate heat and I need a little bit of moisture in the air to breathe. <laughs> and uh, while I'm raisined and my hands are raw and I'm tired and fatigued, that's at least putting some level of physical stress. Not the same as being in a defensive shooting, but still giving you some 
some stress and you can run it um, I mean they have some parameters of course on what kinds of guns and holsters they permit but um, you can run it full carry we ran outside the waistband mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit faster um, but I didn't want time pressure to ruin the um, the learning and opportunities that are there through the rest of it um, it's a uh, it's a really really good course um, I plan on returning yes I'll be back yes <laughs> <laughs> And I, I guess uh, what I was trying to say is I'm not only a confident shooter, mm -hmm. I'm not just comfortable handling a, a weapon, I, I am proficient with, with the gun that I have now trained with, and I won't be returning to my ADC. And of, of all the courses that I've been through, which include various militaries styles, not just U.S. military, and even law enforcement oriented courses, uh, this is the best one for the armed citizen. The scenarios, the training, the drills, uh, the instruction, everything is about being an armed citizen. So, I mean, it, it's fun to go play faux parader in certain courses, and there's certainly value that comes out of some of those tactics. But uh, reality is the most likely time you're ever going to need any of those tactics, uh, unless you're law enforcement or military and even if you are law enforcement or military is when you're by yourself and you've got your carry gun so um, step aside, put the bravado aside and challenge yourself to take a real course that tests you your um, family's worth it for most people no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> of course it is but uh, yeah even just the the um, the criminal and civil liability that comes with defensive yeah. shooting. You can be completely justified in shooting. You could take down somebody who's on the FBI's wanted list and still end up in jail. Um, and there's a lot of factors that play into that and Frontsight helps you realize that and also prepare for it. Yeah. But this was the four day defensive handgun class. Uh, I've taken the two days before, the two day course. Uh, the two day course kind of just opens your eyes. Uh, it's really in the four-day course that, that you get further training. Um, they offer the same course with rifle, they offer it with shotguns, they have unarmed, they have edge weapons. Don't they um, offer 26 different types of classes? Something like that. Um, so it, it uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of options, but it's been a great experience. Uh, I hope this, these two videos that we've done on it has uh, kind of open your eyes or made you consider getting some training because uh, really that's that's the most important thing out there and one of the things that I really respect about the uh, instructors is a lot of them are running very basic common firearms with no modifications um, it, it's not it's not the race car mentality that it's easy to see and get spun up in in the gun industry of buying the latest greatest coolest mod to make your gun slightly better. Not nope, they're they're running I saw we saw beater old Glocks that were completely stock. Um, some nineteen elevens. It the, the the cost of your weapon, then the brand on your weapon, all of those things don't matter. Um, if if you can't deploy it efficiently and proficiently. In fact I'd say probably the most important thing, uh, especially with pistol that I've seen out of these courses, um, both witnessing other students and in my own experience, is how well does that gun work for your hand? It, it sounds silly and it's counter marketing. Sorry, manufacturers. I know, I know the, the companies wish that everyone would run the same gun and that they could just sell that gun. And you can, but why not have it be more comfortable? Why not have it? you know not weigh or feel like it weighs 10 pounds in your hands um especially if you have to carry that and you it might not be heavy at first but you go and put a few rounds in that and it's going to weigh on your hip all day it's be comfortable with your firearm take the time you're worth taking that time to get something that you're comfortable with that you can train and be proficient with um, but if you don't have that option use what you have and train with it and be proficient with it. 
Yeah, I've completed this course with small guns, with a Glock 34, with striker, with hammer, um, double action, single action, single action only. Um, it you can train to whatever gun you've got, uh, but the I guess the biggest takeaway is uh, you can train with what you've got, but what you have may not be the best thing for you, and that's. I mean, we saw people overcome stuff, um, but for me, I know I felt like I had an advantage in the handling because for my hand size with the back strap I have on that K100, everything is within the radius of my thumb. The safety and or decock, the slide lock release, the mag release, everything right there. And when I drove down on it, my hand wrapped away, around it in a comfortable way, mm -hmm. saw folks wear their hand was three quarters of the way around the gun to be able to get to the trigger because the gun was just a little too fat for him. Well, and I, I saw people whose hands were literally split and bleeding. They, you know, were taping and gauzing just to make it through the course, and they went through the course, and uh, something that I told the, my partner on the line was, it'll never feel this difficult or be this painful to fire her, her weapon again. But now she has that training, she has that muscle memory, she's confident in her shooting ability with it. Um, so the next time she heads out to the range, she'll have a pleasant experience because she knows how to operate her gun well. And I think the, the cost, because a lot of people say, oh, well, I'll just buy another gun and try that out for a little bit. I think the cost of attending this course is much less than the cost of buying the wrong gun, messing up in a gunfight, being the subject of a civil lawsuit because of that. I agree. Like it, it's, it's an investment and it's a money saver and you will learn your gun and you will learn how to shoot. Yes. Anyways, so that's a quick wrap up. We may or may not have been able to roll through some photos. It was a little tough. They don't allow filming on the range. Um, Plus, we were on the same firing relay, so it was really tough to, <laughs> to get photos. And challenging. Y'all know how competitive I am, and I stood by him the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, if you guys have any questions about Front Sight or other training courses, let us know. Uh, if you have any similar experiences or suggestions of courses or things, throw it down in the comments and share that information. I mean, that's what this channel is about, is educating. Thanks for watching.